it doesn't matter in this instance, right? Do you now? The meeting is returning to order. Mr. Chairman, um, we have really a crowded agenda, and in addition, this year's Worldcon has already pledged uh, one dollar, at least or approximately one dollar per voting, by which I mean supporting attending and other equivalent members. Uh, they've budgeted ten thousand five hundred dollars as a donation to the committee. In light of the crowded agenda, I ask unanimous consent to withdraw this motion. Is there any objection to the committee withdrawing its motion? Seeing none, it is withdrawn. I believe the YA committee has a statement they'd like to make about signups. Would the, would, remember you needed to do that? Uh, Oh, sorry, wrong committee. I lost track here. Could, uh, could yes, would the YA committee uh, make a mistake here? Adam Tesh. Um, anyone else who's interested in participating in the YA committee, I have a sign-up sheet where we're asking for names and uh, email addresses so that we can add you to the committee. Meet me on the back row right in front of the, uh, the technical table. Thank you. The chair is not absolutely sure that he did the reappointments. Um, I believe, but I'm not certain that the chair reappoint. No, the reappointments of the two committees in the standing rules. If uh, if I hadn't done so, the nitpicking and fly specking committee and the Worldcon Runners Editorial Guide committees are reappointed as currently constituted with uh, authority to augment their members at their discretion. Yes. And while she gets that down, that deals with all resolutions except the one that's been placed on the table, but it can be brought back up when there's no business pending. Um, I do, there is one financial report I would like to hear a statement on, but we're not gonna have time to have any statements from the other seated Worldcons. The chair would like to, re we are at Worldcon Financial Report, slide 10. Uh, the chair would like to recognize Mr. Todd Dashoff. Thank you. My name is Todd Dashoff. I am the chair of the 2001 Worldcon, the Millennium Philcon. Our last financial report is included in your package. We have now distributed all of our surplus. <laughs> On behalf of our committee, I apologize for the time that it took, but I am very glad that it is complete. Uh, because I will make a brief statement because of the fact that we were unable to figure out a way to confirm that there is an entity called the 75th World Science Fiction Convention that is a 501c3 since we don't know who's going to win yet we have split the money that uh, we have distributed this year which already has been distributed to Sasquan and to uh, Mid-American 2 Sasquan has agreed that if they end up not needing the money, <laughs> that they will distribute it to the 75th Worldcon, to the Mark Protection Committee, and to the Worldcon Historic Committee. Uh, we have some members rising. Uh, Mr. Pomeranz. Stick around, Todd. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, just speak oh. into that. Uh, so uh, I was one of the people who spoke strong, I'm sorry, speak John Pomeranz. Mm -hmm. uh, I was one of the people who stro spoke strongly at last year's business meeting, uh, both in the course of the meeting and uh, outside the meeting, to Mr. Dashoff and others about the uh, delay in Millennium Philcon wrapping its books, and suggested that I might uh, try and enlist others to take action to force him to do so. I would like to say that uh, that was not necessary and that the Millennium Philcon uh, fulfilled its obligations to WISFIS without any um, uh, outside pressure, uh, as I suggested might happen. So I move that the meeting thank the Millennium Philcon for resolving this difficult matter. 
Is there any objection to adopting the motion to thank the Millennium Philcon for fulfilling its obligations by acclamation? Hearing none, they are thanked. Thank you. <laughs> for what purpose does the member rise? Mr. Glazer. Just to say that the check for the 2017 winner will be available at the site selection Speak business. Speak into the microphones, people. I thought it was. Okay. No, you're not. Okay, well. I'm Glenn, Glenn Phil. I'm still Glenn. There Glazer. we go. Yes. <laughs> so new. Anyway, um, the check for the winner of the 2017 site selection uh, from Millennium Philcon will be available at the site selection business meeting. I will have it with me there. Is there anyone else attempting to gain the floor regarding this item? Hearing none, thank you. The Millennium Philcon, as far as a WUSFIS committee is concerned, is discharged. <laughs> that takes us to page 14 of the slide deck and item A.1 in your agenda's popular ratification. This is the first of the constitutional amendments a pending ratification. If adopted by majority vote at this meeting, they become part of the Constitution at the end of this Worldcon. Just a moment. You had a question? No, no, I just want to see what... Yes, the, uh, once again, the chairman is one of the makers of this motion and will be accusing himself in favor of Mr. Dashoff. Uh, recusing was the word we were shooting there. Sorry, re <laughs> parliamentary or term of art. We should have given you uh, some rules of order. Uh, 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 the chair uh, recognizes Mr. Stanley. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Ch Mr. Chairman, the motion on the floor before us would add a third stage to the parliament or the process for amending the Constitution. Currently, we amend the Constitution by passing constitutional amendments at one Worldcon, ratifying them at the second. They become a part of the Constitution at, that world con at the end of that Worldcon and take effect the following year. This would keep those two stages as they currently stand and add a third stage of the having the members, all of the voting members, including the supporting members and every attending member uh, and equivalent of the following year's Worldcon be able to vote on site selection in the same way, I mean, as the, in the same way as they vote on site selection. All of the people who are eligible to vote on site selection would be able to vote on the ratification, yes or no. And if more yes votes are cast than no, regardless of how many total votes are cast, then the uh, matter would be ratified and take effect at the end of the third year. Before I continue, I want to make it clear, if this motion is ratified this year, it does not affect Anything passed by this Worldcon first, anything that passes this business meeting is subject to final ratification next year in Kansas City. The process would only begin with things first passed next year in Kansas City. They would then have to be ratified once in 2017 and then voted upon by the 2018 Worldcon. Now, as to why we should do it, We've had a great turnout here, over 200 people. But we have over 11,000 members. Yes, many of them are supporting members, most of them are. But even then, thousands of members of this convention are attending members who can't attend. I receive complaints all the time from people who are even attending members who say, I can't attend, I can't have anything to do with it. This, in my opinion, undermines the credibility of our, of our governance process. I believe that we should allow all of our members, if we're calling them members, we need to give them more membership rights. And one of those rights should be some sort of voice in our rulemaking process. Right now we allow every member, whether they appear here or not, whether they're attending or supporting, to originate business. But we don't give them a chance to vote on it at any stage in it. I think this would really improve our credibility with our members, and it is an improvement in the process. And therefore, I encourage you to vote in favor of it, regardless of any short-term concerns you have. Do remember, this is a five-year experiment. 
this meeting must move to re-ratify it in five years. So even if we do have some challenges with it, we have one more chance five years afterwards to pull it back if we have to. Thank you. Uh, that was a speech in favor. Uh, yes. Point of order is. Sorry, point of order. Um, this may have been covered last year, so forgive me it's a, if it's a repeat, but the Constitution explicitly forbids remote participation in the business meeting. To what extent does voting constitute participation and thus become impermissible? Yes. Um, I, I, it was, well, it was a, the chair has asked the parliamentarian to comment, and uh, my comment would be that this uh, ratification vote is really no more a vote at the business meeting than site selection is a vote at the business meeting. It's a separate process that occurs outside of the business meeting and would be in order if this constitutional amendment is uh, ratified. For what purpose does the member rise? You are recognized. Chris. The chair uh, apologized for not repeating. Mr. Eastlake said that participation in popular ratification does not constitute participation in the business meeting as it is a separate entity outside of the business meeting, much like site selection. And therefore, uh, the amendment is in order, or the motion is in order. My name is Chris Garrett. Again, speaking as the first atten attending, to, attending my very first business meeting um, ever for a con, the reason I, I'm very much against is we, uh, the, theoretically, there's two ways to run an organization. Way one is everyone votes on everything. Way two is the organization elects a group of representatives. The group of representatives go out and get smart on an issue, and then they make a vote. Uh, I know that get, representatives getting smart on an issue is a punchline to a joke, but we have, we have de facto done that here because people who frankly give a damn about what the Worldcon does make the time to be here. People who don't, people who don't, don't. And, that's, and there's, there are thousands of people here who really don't care what we do. So if the ones who care come, then they can vote, and those ones that don't, don't. The chair recognizes, I, I saw you, the chair recognizes Mr. Miller. I am attempting to look in all directions at once. Um, uh, okay. Miller speaking for, um, yes, lots of people, sorry, um, Tim Miller speaking for, yes, lots of people don't come to the business meeting. Uh, lots of people don't nominate for the Hugos and don't vote for site selection. By ratifying this, it's not going to require everybody to vote. It's just going to allow more people who can't make it, who are supporting memberships, who may come to this meeting every year, but can't make it to a certain Worldcon, to still be involved in the process. For what purpose does Ms. Secor rise? The chair recognizes Ms. Secor. And yes. Hi, everybody. I'm Kate Secor, and I'm from California, where we have popular ratification of laws. Let me explain to you how this does not work at all. The laws are very complicated. They use technical legal language. There's a reason that we use technical legal language for laws. There's a reason that we use technical legal language for business meeting motions. I am concerned, because I have done this, and everyone I know from California has done this, that we have looked at something and said, we don't understand this. We don't know what it does. I don't understand these funny words they're using. They're not in my dictionary. I'm going to vote against it until they can come back with something that explains it to me. There is nothing in this motion that requires even what the California Voter Guide does, which gives you a nonpartisan explanation of what the motion is attempting to do. And I am concerned that if we put this in front of the membership, what we're going to get is year after year after year after year of not being able to do anything because the people that we've asked to look at it don't understand what we're trying to do, don't understand the language that we're trying to do it in, and weren't here to hear the arguments and the explanations and ask questions. Here, here. 
The chair recognizes Mr. Yallo if it's a speech for the amendment. Yes. I, see. I will note that I do see the wings and I am going by what, who I see first. I understand there are people in the wings that are trying to get recognition. I am attempting to get you recognition. I promise. Mr. Yallo. Generally, Sorry. Ben Yellow. Ben Generally, I tend to agree with a lot of what Ms. Secor said. Uh, it is completely likely that this system has a bunch of failure modes as she described. On the other hand, I think it's worth giving a try since it's got a mandatory sunset clause. If we take a look at the results and don't like it, we fix it in five years. And quite frankly, I will admit that I have a somewhat different perspective. This is my 45th business meeting. Um, I can wait five years. I can't imagine anything that absolutely positively has to be fixed now. <laughs> For what purpose does Mr. Blog rise? Mr. Blog. Gary Blog. Um, I agree with Kate Secor. Just imagine our membership trying to look at E Pluribus Hugo and understanding one word or what they're trying to do. Um, we're true, so I'm confused myself, and I'm in this business meeting. Um, and I still want more information. We send out something that complicated, that many pages to the membership, it gets voted down because they don't understand it. You have a speech for? Yeah, please. The chair notes that makers of the amendment only get recognized to address if they ask at the beginning. Yes. The timekeeper will note that there are 30 seconds. I understand. Yes, Mr. Matthews. Winton Matthews, you keep saying that after five years this has to be re ratified. I've read this entire thing and don't find anything. Oh, that's debate. Uh, I, I was wondering, where is it? I got it. What? He's out of order. I am. The chair finds the, me the member out of order. Sorry. Leanne Hildebrand. As an elections inspector in the state of California and someone very familiar with that, and also someone who recognizes the very privilege involved in being able to afford to attend this meeting, whether it's held in Spokane or in Helsinki, it's incredibly important to me that we enfranchise the larger voting population. If we trust them enough to, uh, to vote for the Hugos, and we trust them enough to vote for site selection, to educate themselves that way. Thank you. The chair will note that the text about re-ratification of the amendment is at the bottom of page six of your agendas. I am, Mr. Rosenblatt, for what purpose do you rise? Is it a speech against, opposed? Time in favor of the amendment has expired. There is 150 seconds left uh, for speeches against. Howard Rosenblatt. At this business meeting, we discuss, we debate, we clarify, all of which would not be available through the mail. There's no requirement in this uh, amendment that they be required to watch the proceedings here on YouTube in order to be well informed, in order to cast a vote. I think that it's really important that the voters be informed and if they can't attend the business meeting, there may be other ways to make them informed, but sending out a ballot is not sufficient. The chair recognizes Mr. Stanley. Uh, 